Recently, around the holiday season, I found myself checking websites over and over again, trying to see if items are back in stock. And even with something like the stock market, just checking stocks, uh, both maybe dividend history, price history, uh, it takes a lot of time to go through a bunch of different websites and pull in all the information that you need, along with just sitting there and refreshing the page to see if something is back in stock. Uh, but this gets made a whole lot easier with something like an API. Uh, so APIs are application programming interfaces. And what they pretty much allow you to do is use a URL with all of the information that you're trying to fetch from a particular web server uh, hosted by whatever company's information you're trying to, to get a hold of. So in this video, I'm taking a look at Best Buy's API as well as the Financial Modeling Prep API which gives you a whole host of information regarding stocks, bonds, ETFs, uh, everything like that related to the stock market. So first, just looking at what a, an API is. So this diagram shows a REST API, but most APIs are, are going to work very similarly. So you, you have your client. So for me, it's my MacBook Pro with the MKBHD dbrand skin. Uh, and all you're doing, you open up your web browser, you're feeding in a URL, an endpoint URL, that is going to hold all the information, the particular API that you're going to search, as well as all the parameters that you're trying to pull out, like I mentioned before. So let's say for a Best Buy API query, you, you might want to use, let's say, RTX 3080 as your search term, and you want to bring back, you want to receive back information, maybe the SKU, um, the name of the product, the price of the product, and the availability, whether it's in stock or out of stock. So that would be a, an example uh, of an HTTP request URL that you're going to send from your computer to the web server that you're trying to access. And then that web server is going to send you a response. And for, for this example that I'm going to show you guys, it's all in JSON, uh, but you can get responses in XML uh, and a lot of other different types of formats. So first, taking a look at the Best Buy API, and this can be found on Best Buy's website. This is just their developer portal. So as you can see, there would be an example of a URL. So you're searching api.bestbuy, you're searching products, and then you're searching the category path name of flat screen TVs. Uh, the format that you wanna receive that information is in JSON, and then what you're going to show, what you're going to receive back is the SKU, the name, the, the sales price, and you're going to sort all of the results by sales price. And then of course you have an API key. So whenever you're trying to access one of these APIs, the URL is always going to end in your API key. And that will be designated by your individual account. It's how you get access to the actual web server when you're, when you're requesting using the API request. And then you'll get a whole bunch of returns. So the total time here you can see is 0 0.035 seconds. So it's a pretty quick uh, request and response. And then what you get back is a SKU. So you get the name of the TV, the, the SKU number of the TV, the name of the TV and the sales price. And it's all sorted by, by the sales price. So this is the cheapest TV right now that you can buy at Best Buy, $69.99, uh, an Insignia 19 inch TV, uh, 720p for that matter. So there's a bunch of different things that you can search. And if we go to search techniques, these are all the different ways that you can search. So digging through all this information, I'm not gonna do that right now in this video, but just to show you guys a quick example, I'm gonna jump into Python and I've already created a quick uh, script that is going to search all of the RTX 3080 SKUs um, and it's going to return the name, the price, the SKU number, um, it's going to return the manufacturer and whether it's orderable or not. So whether it's available or it's out of stock. And then all I'm doing is using a print function to print out that table in a nice fancy format using tabulate. And this is going to run pretty much all the time. So it's gonna run every five seconds unless we get that one of the items is available. So once for the most part, RTX 3080s have been out of stock all the time, but as soon as we return that one of those items is available, then it stops it from running. And then it shows that, you know, one of the items is available. You can now go to Best Buy's website and pull it out. Of course, you could then use this 
for like a bot or something like that, but that's not really the purpose of what I'm trying to use it for, to then go ahead and actually go through the clicks, go through each individual web page and actually purchase one of these items once it becomes instantly available. And that's how a lot of these scalpers are getting their hands on so many of these RTX cards. But if we go ahead and we run this, what you'll see is we return a list of all of the RTX 3080s, but it, it gives you a really good idea of how to see all of this information that you're trying to pull from the API. And I can show you guys the actual API uh, address that I'm using. What I'm doing is splitting the URL into three strings. So you have the first part of the Best Buy API URL request, and then I have a list of SKUs. That way, if I ever wanted to add more SKUs or remove SKUs, that one string is pretty much kept really consistent. And then everything after this in the last part of the URL is then what I'm returning. So I'm returning it in format JSON. My page size is now 50, so I can return 50 different items, and I'm sorting by orderable. So that will make it so that the when an item becomes available, that goes to the top of my print result. And then I'm showing the SKU, the name, the regular price, uh, the manufacturable, the manufacturer, and whether it is orderable or not. In 35 lines of code, we can pretty much pull in any information we want to see on product availability from Best Buy's website. But then if we wanted to take it up a notch, there's a lot more interesting things that we can do with, let's say, the API, like I was showing before, from Financial Modeling Prep. And Financial Modeling Prep has put together an awesome API that lets you pull in a bunch of different stock information. Uh, so as you can see here, there's pretty much a different URL request and what that is going to return listed here. I will put the website uh, in the description below so you guys can just take a look at it. There's a lot of demo um, capabilities here. There's even a free license that way you can, I think it's pull up to 50 queries per day. Um, so if I take a look at one of these JSON requests, what it returns. So as you can see, uh, the URL is pretty much just financial modeling prep, API, and then we're looking at their historical price full uh, particular uh, request. And all I'm searching is the Apple stock ticker. Uh, so then we get a whole JSON return of the historical dividend history for Apple uh, starting really recently, uh, November 9th of 2020, going all the way back to May 11th, 1987. So we get their full dividend history. Then we can take that dividend history and put it into like a typical stock pricing or, or stock valuation model, like the, the dividend discount model and return out what we're expecting the price of that stock to be right now. So if I go over into Python yet again, we can look at this particular set of code, this particular script. But before we hop into the actual script, I just want to show you guys what it's going to return. So as you can see, the top of this is just a list of stock symbols, stock tickers that we're going to run our model on. Uh, it then returns a list of industries. So these are all of the different industries that these stock tickers are uh, a part of and what their average PE ratio is. So this is a calculation done in the script that will take all of the tickers that belong to that particular industry, add up all of their PE ratios, and then divide by the number of, of stocks in that particular industry. That way we can get an average PE ratio for the industry to compare uh, against each individual stock. Uh, if you know a little bit about stocks, if the PE ratio is below the, the industry average, then that stock is most likely undervalued and could potentially increase, or it might mean that potential investors aren't super high on that stock, and that's why the price to earnings ratio is a little bit lower than the industry average. But then what we're returning overall, we're returning the, the stock symbol, the name of that particular stock, what industry it's a part of. Then we're looking at the PE ratio and the industry PE, the market cap, that way we can compare different market caps between particular uh, industry segments. We're looking at the dividend discount model. So there's a whole algorithm built in to my script that then values the stocks according to the dividend discount model, as well as the EPS value. So we can take a look at the PE ratio, the current EPS, or what we're expecting the EPS to be based on past growth in the next 
quarter or in the next year. And that way we can price what we expect that stock to be valued out in the, in the following year. And then last price is just the last price that that stock was listed at on the, the stock exchange and we give it a rating. So if the dividend discount model and the EPS value for the stock is greater than the current value of the stock, then it's a buy. If they're both less, it's a sell. If one is greater and one is less, then it's a hold. So let's take a look at this first one. So PC Tel Inc. Industry Communications Equipment, uh, the PE ratio 37.49, very close to the industry PE. You can see it's market cap. And then we have the dividend discount model value is 12.7. The EPS value is 16.45 and the current price is 6.71. So we might expect this stock to possibly double um, in price. And that's why it's rated as a buy. So all we're going to run our model on is our group of symbols that we have listed in uh, our symbols list. And then we have a whole bunch of more for loops, while loops, if else statements that is going to do all the different calculations that we wanna do on each of the values. And then at the bottom, we have a return. We sort the list first by buy, hold, and sell rating. So that we have the buys up top, then the holds, and then the sells. And then with each, within each one of those groups, buy, hold, and sell, we can then sort all of the stocks together that are in the same industry. So let's say we wanna group uh, consumer electronics together. We can do that. We wanna um, sort healthcare stocks together, we can sort those together within each one of the ratings. So let's just run this one real quick. And you'll see it'll take a little bit of time to run, but we have our list of symbols that we're running on. That'll get printed out first. Now it's running through all of that code, that 330 lines, and we get a return. So now we can see the industry average PE value. And a lot of these will just correlate because we only are pulling in one stock into each industry. So a lot of these industry PEs aren't of course representative, but if you pull in a wide range of stocks, I've pulled in probably around 300 to 400 stock tickers in one of these runs, and then you get a whole bunch of values. Um, so as you can see here, a lot of these stocks are buys, a couple holds and one sell, but you can see it's grouped by buy, hold and sell. And then of course it's grouped by the the individual industries. So you can see Pfizer, GlaxoSmithKline, and Johnson & Johnson are all grouped together under Drug Manufacturers General. And we get all of these values here. And you can see not all of the values are super uh, accurate, probably, but a lot of them are pretty accurate in the sense, if you look at like Apple, so right now we're priced at uh, $131.97. And the dividend discount model gives Apple a price target of $127.92. And an EPS uh, estimate gives it a price of $150.24. So although you might not have grasped everything that I just showed you regarding the financial modeling prep API and that 350 lines of code that I just showed briefly, uh, even if you didn't grasp it, it still shows you the immense capabilities that you have with a little bit of coding knowledge. I'm not super skilled in Python, but I was still able to do this pretty pretty easily. Uh, of course, there's trial and error, but it all comes together in the end. But looking at a 35 line Best Buy code that pulls in all of the information you might wanna see on product availability versus pulling in a whole bunch of stock data to do a whole wide variety of calculations and comparisons to give a particular rating to a stock. It's all possible with APIs. Uh, as long as you're able to just pull out the information from that JSON uh, response from the server and take that information, do whatever you want to do to it to manipulate it, and then print out a result. So those two examples show you the true power of what APIs allow you to do. They allow you to pull a whole wide variety of information from the web in a very short period of time. You're not requesting or refreshing a page over and over again. All you're doing is pulling the results whenever you wanna pull them pretty rapidly and pretty efficiently. Uh, like we showed before from the Best Buy API, it was like 0 0.05 seconds. So five one hundredths of a second, very, very quick. Um, so technically you could make that request multiple times a second and get a return value every single time. So I hope this video showed you guys the true power 
of APIs. I mean, it's just sort of a basic overview of what they allow you to do. But if you have any questions, any comments whatsoever, definitely leave those in the comments below. Uh, if you liked the video, if you enjoyed it, if you learned something, definitely give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I haven't done too much of this content uh, in the past, but if you guys enjoy it, you guys like it, definitely leave that in the comments below and I'll definitely try to incorporate a little bit more of this into the channel as well. But like I said, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications, that way you can stay up to date on my latest videos, whether it's this or building a gaming PC or testing out some monitors, definitely, definitely get subscribed and I will see you in the next one.